This is my 2009 Abarth SS. I've owned this car from you and it's now performed 150,000 miles. Is this the highest mileage Abarth SS in existence? So this is the 150,000 mile video update. Before we give you an update on what's happening for the future, just gonna give you a bit of backstory on what's gone on in the past. So this is a 2009 Abarth SS, had the SS kit fitted on from new. The SS kit is installed at the actual dealership, so it's provided in a wooden box case and is, is delivered to the dealership and is installed at the actual dealership from new or it can be delivered after a certain mileage. I purchased this bath in 2009. I purchased it from new, 80,500 um, after full specification. So I added a lot of extras onto the car. Um, can't remember what the actual base build was, but I know there's quite a bit of extras that I added. The final retail list was quite expensive with all the options that I added on. So the car has performed near as damn it faultlessly. Obviously it's been serviced regularly, but it's been but the car has performed almost faultlessly from you up to 135,000 miles and still on its original clutch. Now, that's not the mileage we're at now. At 135,000 miles, we had that top end failure. Now, that top end failure occurred because the crankshaft camshaft cog slipped um, and the bolt, the actual bolt came loose the camshaft sprocket, in effect the crankshaft sprocket, which linked to the crankshaft with the, for the cam belt, that remained static. That meant that the valves hit the pistons, etc. Now, and there wasn't a mechanical sound, there wasn't initially a mechanical sound, um, but if you want more details about this failure, then please check the description below. I'll put some links to the previous videos. Now, what occurred to resolve that problem was the engine was dismantled, it was noted that the bottom end looked to be okay and after, after speaking to various specialists who knew these engines really well, I was told that should be able to get away with a top end rebuild. So I purchased a reconditioned head, had that head installed at 135,000 miles and new cogs put in, so new cam belts, uh, new cam belt cogs, obviously new stretch bolt that fitted the cam, uh, that fitted the camshaft bolt to the crankshaft end and the car was serviced and MOT'd and it has gone on ever since. It, was, um, it hasn't been serviced since that failure, so for 15,000 miles it's been driving fine and it is still on its original clutch. So the last update we gave you was around January earlier this year. This is now 8,000 miles later. So the last update we gave you was 142,000 miles. We're now at 150,000 miles, so the car has done 15,000 miles since that failure, since the 135,000 mile failure in 2021, this car has now done an additional 15,000 miles, still on its original clutch. Still the clutch is showing no signs of failure. It's a little bit stiff, you can tell it's not a new clutch, but it's showing no signs of slippage, no signs of failure, and the car is performing fine. No issues whatsoever, no loss in power, no rattling, nothing. Um, so car is good so thumbs up to a bath again and the catastrophic failure that caused the top end valves hitting the pistons wasn't a, a defect in the engine i'm pretty sure it's an issue with a company that serviced it previously and they didn't tighten that bolt up properly or something went on with that bolt because the shoulder of the bolt was rusted so it showed that that bolt had been hanging out for quite a long time now that proves that it was at that at that situation at the point of failure in effect for a long time so it got away with it for a long time but you're not going to get away with it forever so it wasn't a defect in the car it was just a set of circumstances whether or not it was because of a previous company that had serviced the car had for some reason not tightened it up had loosened it off and not tightened it up to set the timing i'm not sure never we'll never find that out but that's why it failed. So for those people who previously mentioned in the 135K failure video, for those people who, who commented and said, it's a major defect in the car and the car's weak and everything else, that wasn't the case. 
it was because of a mechanical failure due to a bolt coming loose in effect a stretch bolt so again if you want more details of that link in the description below to the video so where are we now so we're at the situation now where the car is just coming up to 150,000 miles this year it's 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 performed so far around 9,000 miles 8,000 miles since January and performed pretty much faultlessly it's been used as a great service car taking us to and fro locations to shoot videos um, which has been quite some extensive mileage you can imagine we've been over to Kent recently in the car to video the MSO1 765L T that very specialist um, that very specialist McLaren Special Operations 765 LT um, all the way to Kent um, all the way back again and we're all the way over to Watford in the car to film the 488 Pista as well so we're doing racking really racking up the mileage this car has been really reliable and you, you can't expect much else from a car like this it's just been performing brilliantly and we're in sport mode at the moment and it's still very very peppy in fact, most of the time, to be absolutely honest with you guys, I don't drive it in sport mode because the steering weights up too much in sport mode. And yes, it's more performant because the extra map goes into the ECU. So what that sport button does, um, the major change it makes is it changes the configuration of the turbo boost. So it pushes more turbo boost in, into the top end of the car. So it makes it more peppy, more performant. But of course, perceivably, it will use a bit more fuel with that, even though turbo boost is very efficient. By the way, if you can hear some rattling, we'll get to that in a second. So that's where we are. The car's been performing really well. It's now done 150,000 miles and no problems whatsoever. Now it's coming up to its service for the end of the year. I've gone really past the service time frame at 15,000 miles since it was last serviced, since the engine rebuild, since the top ending of the engine rebuild. Now what's wrong with the car at the moment now? You can probably hear a little bit of rattling in the background, which is probably very annoying. What that rattling is, is the lower right control arm. Yes, I know I mentioned in the, in the update video in January that I was gonna have that control arm replaced because it was a recommendation on the previous MOT, but I just haven't got around to it yet. We've been so busy creating content on the channel and so busy with other work and other bits and pieces, so busy with life in effect, that I just haven't had time to get the car and um, to get those parts changed and to get the car and to get the car service um, so the car will be going in for its service within the next three to four weeks and that lower control arm will be replaced now some other bits need to be resolved as well um, failures issues that exist at the moment on the car are that lower control arm that's rattling away like a good one, but it isn't by the way that lower control arm cannot actually come out it's just the bushes that are worn so even though it rattles it makes an unpleasant sound and you can feel it on the steering a bit it's not unsafe it's never going to just come out because it's bolted in it cannot go anywhere uh, other issues that the car has the sunroof works fine apart from the fact of when you close it i'll try and show you here if you can see that when you close it it just flips back up again it doesn't actually close now that's because that's because of a sensor failure and that's been like it for quite a while so that needs to be resolved also we have a bit of a bang in the car that we showed you in January and we've showed you previously where I reversed into a pillar in a car park it was only about a two mile an hour bang uh, but that needs to be resolved it's just a quarter panel on the front so it's not quite the full wing it's just a little quarter panel now we still have the problem with regards to the number plate light not working or the number plate not light not working intermittently so the rear number plate light failure could be one of two things i mentioned this in the video update in january it could either be a failure of the wiring loom connection so the connection of the wiring loom from the compartment of the car to the rear hatch lid or it could be the rear number plate or it could be the the opening lid rear hatch section so that chrome section where you have the electronic button underneath where which also holds the number plate lights um, that part could could be um, that, that part could be failing having performed some research I noticed that that is a, a well-known failure point for the number plate light and for the hatch lid stop working for the hatch lid opening catch stop working now interestingly enough we started having some problems with a button that opens up the rear hatch lid which is all on that same section all on that same control unit so that pretty much points to the fact we've got some direct sunlight here 
that pretty much points to the fact that that assembly needs to be replaced and it's not to do with the wiring. So there was a section of wiring loom that you could buy that I think it was around 75 pounds um, that you could install that replaced the failure of the wiring because the wiring is con because the hatch lid is being continually opened and closed that wiring section is comp continually being stressed and it would seem that um, Fiat didn't install flexible wiring in that section so it, it's like normal wiring they've used there that means that under that sort of stress continually being bent it fails and so that did fail some time back um, previously documented in my earlier videos and that has been replaced and remediated with the proper new wiring loom section that connects into the existing wiring loom so so pretty sure it's not that pretty sure it's the rear handle it's the rear hatch handle so that has to be replaced now when i last looked that was 185 pounds plus vat i don't know what that is now but that was a year ago when i checked that um so that shouldn't be too bad to replace um, so that'll have to be replaced as part of the updates that have been performed for getting this car through its MOT and for the service. So that's about it. What's wrong with the car at the moment? Um, that knock-in, as I say, is the lower right control arm. We need the rear hatch, number plate and catch handle, that section replacing. And at some point, need to repair the bodywork, that quarter panel needs to be replaced and resprayed. And this is pearlescent white. so it's quite expensive to respray any panels on this car. Now, I know the car looks really dirty and I haven't been washing it very well. I got, I get vilified for that in the comments. The car is actually in quite good condition underneath that dirt because the car is PPF. Um, three quarters of the car or, or much, of, much of the car is actually PPF. So it's actually quite clean underneath that PPF. Now the mileage that we've done in this car so far this year is around 9,000 miles. That doesn't seem that much, but actually it is quite a bit because we've been using two cars, remember. We've got the 458 Spider and we've got this above. Now this has been used for all the all the day-to-day -day mileage and for getting us to and from locations for filming, etc. as I've already detailed. But the 458 has been used a lot for mileage as well. So we've put at least four to 5,000 miles on the 458 this year. And we put 3,100 on it on the European trip alone. So if you take that into account with the around circa 9,000 miles that we put on the above, we've done around 14, 15,000 miles all told throughout the year. So it's quite a bit of mileage. We've probably done more mileage than that, to be honest. The above has done most of the mileage, of course, because of it taking us to and from the locations for filming, but it's been extremely reliable. Haven't had any problems with the car. It's a great little car. Do I regret buying this car? No, it's been great. It's been it's been a very good investment and yeah the car's worth next to bugger all at the moment but the better the devil you know now what we're going to do is we're going to find a place to pull over and we're going to give you a bit of a talk through of a future project that we're thinking of for this abarth ss <laughs> So what's in future for our Abarth SS? I've owned this car from new from 2009 and it's looking a bit dilapidated. I think you'll agree guys. Yeah, I agree. I don't wash it anywhere near as often as I should. That's because I spend most of my time on developing videos for the channel and on the 458. My 458 Spider gets the priority and this car doesn't get the priority. And there's obvious reasons why. 458 is worth a lot more than this car and it's not to say I don't love this car it's been very reliable been fantastic as now performed 150,000 miles which is absolutely incredible and still on its original clutch I know I keep banging on about that but that is incredible so what's in the future for this car well as a detail this car is in a very dilapidated state so what we're thinking of doing is a part restoration let me know in the comments below what you think of that. So I'll just repeat that again. We're looking to perform a part restoration of this car. Now, just doing a quick walk around, I'll talk you through some of the items that need to be remediated. First of all, we hit a badger. Sorry for the badger, but it broke the front splitter. So this needs to be repaired. Now the whole front of the car is PPF. So 
When this PPF is pulled off, the, the paintwork will actually be immaculate and it's triple layered white pearlescent paint. So that's why I had um, PPF installed on the car, paint protection film. Now I banged this side, this, this side panel, this uh, fender side panel or this wing side panel some years back in a car park and it, it was just a very low speed it was about two miles an hour and the post was about this high I didn't see it and reversed into the actual pillar and this needs to be repaired so this quarter panel needs to be replaced and again that will have to be resprayed it's triple white paints so will have to be re um, re repainted it may be able to be repaired but I suspect a new quarter panel um, would, would be a better option for that Obviously it needs a good clean. It had a, a key score in it some years back when I was parked waiting for a train. I was parked up to take a train and some kind person ran his key along the side of the side of the paintwork. And unfortunately that isn't PPF, so that means respraying that door. If we focus on this particular wheel, these are the SS wheels. Now these wheels need to be refurbished. So these wheels will get fully refurb refurbished. Let me know in the comments below what colour you think we should take them to. I'm thinking back to the standard grey or the titanium colour that they were originally. But let me know your thoughts. Maybe they should go to silver. And as we walk round, this is the part that I was talking to you about earlier that will need to be replaced to resolve the problems with the rear number plate light and the, and the rear hatch lid button that is failing. Um, this is a well-known failure point, so this needs to be replaced as part of the MOT. Um, but as part of this restoration, that, that will get done before the rest restorative work. With regards to this, this side sill, this is just the front cap section and this is just the PPF because the side sill sections and the end caps of these side seals have all been PPF. So that's just PPF that's coming off, so that's not deterioration of the paintwork. But while we mention the paintwork, that's one of the biggest changes that we're thinking about um, updating. Should we change the colour of this car? It's pearlescent white at the moment. We're thinking of taking it to either black, maybe a metallic black and with silver wheels, or to a dark metallic green or a dark oak, oak type green and changing the colour of the interior as well. We'll get onto the interior in a minute. Now with regards to the paint colouring options, we're thinking of either t doing a bare metal respray or taking this paintwork down, prepping the paintwork and getting it resprayed, properly resprayed, or using peelable paint. Now Sam from Seen Through Glass was doing a Biposto update on a 595 a bath and he had peelable paint put on. He had Rosso Fuoco peelable paint put on his 595 a bath. So possibly that's an option to have peelable paint put in a car but that means then that the base paint would still be pearlescent white. It wouldn't repair the, the paintwork issues that exist on this car. Um, so colour options let me know in the description below. Say at the moment we're thinking metallic black or dark metallic green, um, or maybe even a red, maybe a Rosso Fuoco red with peelable paint. Maybe we should go with that, that option, the same as um, Sam did from Seen Through Glass. Let us know in the comments below. So, what are we gonna do about this interior? Again, ignore the dirt. Yeah, I know I don't hoover it out fanatically. It's a workhorse, guys. You know, it's used for mileage crunching. Say so it's done 150,000 miles. But what the hell are we going to do about this? In its day, it was fantastic, but obviously it needs reupholstery. We're thinking maybe a dark tan um, or a terracotta interior. If we, have, if we have a metallic green on the outside, if we have a dark green on the outside, then maybe a tan interior or a terracotta interior. Um, and what do you think we should go for the carpets? At the moment we've got black. Maybe we should leave black because black goes with everything and just deal with the actual seats and reupholster the seats. But remembering, we've got the rear seats down because again, it's a workhorse. We use it for, for moving stuff to and fro. But should we get these rear seats? These rear seats are immaculate. Should we get these rear seats reupholstered as well? Because if we get the, the colours change on the front seats, maybe we should get the colours change on the back seats as well. But again, black leather will go with anything so whatever color we have the front seats done in black will still go with it so those are the options guys we're looking at a part restoration of the car to repair all the bits and pieces on the on the panel damage that the car has got and to recolor the car both externally and internally to do a part restoration to bring the car back up to its former glory so guys, let me know what you think of the idea of a part restoration or of our Abarth SS. Now it's reached 150,000 miles. Also, let me know what you think about the colours that we've proffered with regards to the external colour and the interior colour and, and, and interior upholstery changes. Thanks a lot for watching, guys, and we'll catch you in the next video.